Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation this morning um, is going to be talking about zoning and, you know, why this is important as we move steps closer to the 2023 general elections. Political parties have started to, of course, position themselves, uh, listening very closely to what the people are saying and also listening to, you know, advice from uh, analysts on what must be done in order to win in the elections in 2023. Earlier today, we also spoke about uh, the national chairmanship of the PDP very likely being zoned to the north and what that means with whoever it is that they choose as their uh, candidate for 2023. But these are all just steps with regards who exactly uh, will be taking, you know, um, you know, the mantle for 2023 um, on different political parties. This morning, we're speaking with a policy risk management expert, Mr. Oshinawa Ibrahim, uh, to share his thoughts concerning zoning. Mr. Ibrahim, good morning. Thanks for joining us and thanks for your time as always. Thank you for having me, um, my, my, my uh, presenter. And thank you, Nigerians, for, for having me as well. Always a pleasure. Uh, all right, so let, now let's start with, you know, the controversy concerning zoning. Um, the, if, you, if you notice, you know, the conversation changes every now and then, you know, in different regions. There are times when people say, you know, political groups would say, or forums rather, would say, oh, yes, we support zoning. It should come to this part of the country um, next. And then a couple of years later, they have a rethink and say, oh, no, it's not constitutional. Um, so l let me first of all get your thoughts on the idea of zoning. Do you think that that is how Nigerians should, um, you know, run the electoral process? Um, thank you very much for having me once again. Um, I've been monitoring the um, this zoning, you know, pandemic. That is what we're going to call it because everybody is affected with the zoning issue right now. Uh, yes. But zoning in political space is not an issue. It's even constitutional. Going by the federal character, going, going by you know the rights guaranteed by the constitution for you know uh, every Nigerian who is born on the soil to be eligible to contest. Um, for the office of the president or whatever uh, offices he or she so desire. Um, zoning is normal. It's, you know, it brings co coercion. It brings, uh, you know, um, um, unity. It brings, uh, you know, it, it, it brings harmony. And let's be specific about the Nigerian politics. Zoning is normal. Zoning is, is great. Look at the position of both parties. The constitutions of both parties are friendly and tailored towards fairness, equity, and justice. So zoning in Nigeria um, uh, is, is even constitutionally friendly. So every country has their own political, you know, ingredients. They have their own political, you know, uh, um, um, landings. So not to say, so zoning for me is, 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 is good. Some constitution agrees and have a section testing the zoning of or rotational presidency or the governorship or whatever they feel that political exigency is demanded. So zoning for me is, for, is, is, is legitimate, even in the Nigerian constitution. Of course, zoning is indirectly or directly going by the federal character principle. It's constitutional. Well, the, 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 the explanation... The, if it's going to be tested in court. Yeah, the, uh, sadly, the um, narrative concerning it's, con it's being constitutional or not is different uh, from uh, Northern, Northern Governors uh, Forum because they say it's unconstitutional, um, uh, you know, simply because, you know, it should be the right of every Nigerian to contest for any political seats across the country. Um, but you're saying it is constitutional, for the same reason. You know, all this um, politics of, uh, you know, we, are no, we have a numerical strength, all this politics of, you know, we are bigger than the others, this would not bring, you know, this would definitely bring, you know, the salmon in the country. 
It's going to bring a lot of chaos in the country, you know. And I've listened very carefully to some of the governors, some of their personal thoughts about their, you know, the Northern Governors Forum and the rest of them. Though I don't want to make comments about the gentleman uh, Baba Ahmed's comments. I don't want to make I don't want to make any comment on him because I don't want to even polish him or promote him. He is not, he's just a retired permanent secretary or probably a director. So when governor speaks, you know, he doesn't have any right to speak. And I'm glad that some of the Southern governor does not respond to him. Who, 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 who the hell is he? What is he talking about? But I'm glad that some of our calls on other programs like yours on TVC and the rest of them, calling on the Northern Governors Forum to speak. And I, I'm glad they did. Now, let's go to their issue. If you listen to some of their communique, they are saying that the Southern governors should not mandate them. And I agree with them. The, the use of must must be, must be removed. And I'm calling on Governor Akeredolu, I'm calling off on Governor, um, Governor um, Kyle Defiami to please work on the communique, the language and the test of their communicate to the country. Politics is about negotiation. It's about give and take. It's about mobilization. It's about dialogue. You know, use of must or shall come to the South doesn't work. For me personally, it doesn't work. Of course, I want um, the presidency to come to the South and I'm going to work for it to come to the South so that there has to be a balance President, His Excellency President Mohamed uh, Bari will finish his channel in the next two years. Then he should move to the southern part of the country. After our channel or eight years in office, so be it, then he will go back to the north. Now, I'm, I'm, I, I, what I think the Northern Governor Forum they are saying is that there should not be a mandatory. There has to be, of course, look at what Martin Luther King said, you can't govern me without my consent. If you want to govern anybody, you have to go out, you have to campaign, you have to speak to the North. I expect the Southern Governor Forum to speak politely to the Northern Governor Forum. That is ideal. Listen to what my dear brother, Governor Rufai said. He said the issue the Northern Governors are having, having with the Southern Governors is the language, the text, the text of the world. You know, I'm not doubting that if PDP zones their own presidency to the north, the likes of Atiku, even without zoning to the north, the likes of Atiku who speak. Look at my dear friend, Shegu Shomumi. Of course, all the full soldiers of Atiku, they have already mobilizing that with or without their zoning committee recommendations, Atiku is going to run. So it's possible that we're going to have another candidate from the, from the north. It's possible an, a candidate will go to emerge from the north, either in PDP or any other party. But hopefully, I'm sure you're going to come here back. The candidate that will emerge from PDP is going to come from the north. I can assure you. So this uh, discussion, and at the end of the day, is a game of number. So let's, I will call on the Southern Governor to mobilize the majority of the Northern Governors. Majority. You can't capture them all. Some of the governors, like Governor of Bolonu, Governor of, uh, you know, um, Governor of uh, Jobs, Plato State, and the rest of them are supporting, including Nasarawa, supporting the Southern candidates. Some of them are speaking up, but what we need is just a chunk of them. We don't need all of them, because some of them will still, you know, some of the PDP governors who are among the Northern governors will, will definitely, definitely support the Northern, you know, indirectly support the Northern candidates. So oh, the game well. ahead is still far too far fresh. So yes, everybody should get ready. The next one or two, three months, we'll see what's going to happen after the convention of PDP. It's, it's pretty interesting to see, you know, and you know, it it now almost sounds like the the um, it, most important factor is the support of governors and the forums instead of the electorate and who they really want uh, to, you know, take over the mantle of leadership in twenty twenty three. Um, and I, I want you to, you know, speak with regards where you see the political parties leaning towards and the reason they might be leaning in that direction. Uh, do you think that there might be fears of presenting a northern candidate in 2023? Do you think that these you know, political parties might want to you know, move away from that, mostly because 
of um, you know the last couple of years in Nigeria? You know, um, in my, um, I'm a member of the British uh, Institute of uh, Risk Management um, and you know policy strategies, and we are mentioning the risk analysis or, or baggage of issues candidates that might possibly match. Um, let me let me just let me take it from the first question you asked that the process of you know leadership in our country starts from the political party. We are still talking about the party structure right now. The electorate are not involved. Yeah, okay. The process of convention, setting up the party machinery, convention and nomination of the presidential candidate, then after sorting our issue politically, issues parties so, 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 you know, sorting their, themselves out and get providing a, and, and producing a candidate, then the electorate can come in. And who are the electorate? Most of some of them are also a party, a party member, but most of them are not. Now, if you look at the detachment of, you know, a, you know, people who are not in politics, maybe from private sector, ordinary citizen, they are saying that either you bring from the north or south, they want the best candidate. Like the former enemy of Carlos said recently, that who are the candidates? So, you know, we seem to have uh, lost uh, feed from you, uh, but of course we'll try to reconnect and get uh, the conversation going. We're mostly speaking about zoning and how important it is, um, you know, as we take, um, you know, further steps towards 2023 and the general elections coming, um, you know, in 2023. Um, these are important conversations, mostly because, you know, a lot of these, most of the political parties, the two major political parties really, uh, you know, will need to make decisions um, that will give them a fighting chance in 2023. Another thing that I'm very sure I will bring up, you know, is the, the argument concerning zoning and competence. And who, you know, what do you think should be more important? Is it the region? where the candidate comes from, or competence, you know, and maybe that's where the electorate would also come into the picture. Um, I've had numerous conversations concerning this, you know, and asked Nigerians, what really is more, is more important to you? Is it the region the candidate comes from, or um, the competence of that, of that candidate? Um, yes, there's arguments that, yes, you know, every region in the country has, you know, persons, of, you know, of um, very, very high competence level that will be able to steer the Nigerian ship, you know, properly. Um, and so it doesn't matter where they're from or, they, you know, it doesn't matter, um, you know, what, what region they're from. There's definitely uh, enough competent hands in every region. Um, but what is the Nigerian electorate feeling like and what is the mindset of the Nigerian electorate um, in the next couple of years, seeing the way things have um, turned out in Nigeria? Mr. Oshinawa, can you hear us now? Yes, I can. Please. Welcome back. Uh, can we go ahead? Uh, and then we can talk about competence vis-a-vis uh, -vis zoning. So we are right now at the stage of, you know, the party, you know, affairs. The party affairs takes, you know, from getting your World Congress, your State Congress, then going to the convention, nomination to the convention, then the convention that will nominate or, you know, the presidency or the president of the each party. So we are still at that process. So most of, you know, the, what is happening right now is just a party affairs because there is no way you can be nominated without having, you know, a political party. The independent candidate right now is not there. Look at some, you know, some folks in Lagos State, the, there's a young guy um, planning or lobbying to be, you know, uh, a, a, the governor of the state. Look at Ogun State, for instance, my state. You know, Chai Gusho, me, my dear friend, is saying he wants to be the governor of the state. He said the incumbent governor is a, is a bad way your governor. He has a reason for saying that. So, everybody, this is a, this is a party affairs right now. And we look forward to probably after the PDP convention, then we will now see what each party will present to the, uh, you know, to the populace, to the electorate. And at the same time, I urge our party to ensure that we produce one of the best candidates that will be acceptable to Nigerians. Because right now, Nigeria believes that 2023, after President Muhammad Buhari, we need somebody who has the tenacity, who has the widespread, who is acceptable by all to lead this country and move forward for where President Muhammad is probably going to stop. So these are the things uh, we are looking up in APC. But in PDP, 
of course, there's a lot of go to. Some of them are rejecting the recommendations of the Sony committee that has one of their biggest, you know, big wings. Two former Senate presidents or three of them, governors, and they are saying they are not interested in their, in, in, in their recommendation. So we're going to see a lot of issues. You know, some are still going to pull out in PDP. I can assure you, coming to APC, and we are ready to accept them. Like Governor Yofayo said, hopefully, I'm sure he's going to come back. He's my dear brother. He's going to come to APC. You know, like many of them who are possibly going to come back because there's a, a lot of issue in their party. You know, right now, they have no, you know, their, 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 their National Executive Committee is, is in disarray. Which is second is suspended. My dear friend, Kola, I don't even know where he is right now. So there's a lot of issue going back and forth. So we look forward to the convention. Then our own is coming up probably in December or January. Let's by God's grace, you know. Now let's talk about it from the the um, level of the electorate. Now, um, from conversations that you've had, um, and of course, you know, from what you've also felt. From the people, do you think that the zoning conversation is important? Do you think there's more Nigerians that are eager to vote for either a southern or northern candidate? You know, um, you know, speaking as a Nigerian, I think most of the Nigerian, you know, elite right now, they they're looking at the competency right now. The competent candidate is what's going to attract them. You know, I also believe in that as a professional, you know, in politics. I believe competency, you know, is very important. I can assure you, the South has, of course, is going to present one of the best brains in terms of private and public sector that will lead this country. You know, championing, you know, some of the strategic policy that this administration is, you know, is embarking on. So, most Nigerians probably will not look at the zoning where you come from or where, but of course, largely people will believe that the power should come to the south. I've been, you know, I've, uh, I've seen, you know, you know, you know, the, the, the performance of President Ramon Buhari, and it's coming from the north extraction. So we believe that most will believe that, okay, for fairness, equity, and justice the South also should have a bite of it, so which is, you know, normal in a democratic setting. But I insist, the, Niger the Southern Governors Forum and most of our elites in the South must lobby the North. Must lobby the North. The issue of comp compostering, you know, rhetorics, saying it must come to South, must stop. People should manage the language or, you know, the communicator that is coming out from the South I was telling some of my, you know, uh, um, 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 Southeast, you know, friends that, you know, you can't say you want to be the president of this country without lobbying or, you know, you know, massaging few egos from the South. If you have to be or be one of, one of the topmost office in this, in this country, you have to lobby. You can't do it alone. The Southeast alone cannot produce the presidency of this country. There's no way you want to do it. So the politics, you have to play the politics. And some of them, like Rosa Jokorosha, um, Governor uh, Umai, Governor Opus Odima, these are the things they are promoting. And the former Kenyan Amon, the former Senate president, they are promoting... Uh, Mr. Shino, we, we seem to have lost uh, your sound. Uh, once again, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I hope that we can reconnect with you and um, get clearer feed. Um, I want to ask next, you know, you don't know that he speaks a little bit more on the reason uh, there is more, or it seems that there is more people who are lobbying uh, to see a southern candidate. And I'm referring to the electorate once again. Um, and what exactly the reason, you know, is, or, or what the reason really is uh, behind that. Because I've seen people who say, um, Mr. Ashinova, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, I apologize uh, for that. I'm not sure what's going on with the network. But I want you to speak a little bit more. You would mentioned it already. On the reason you feel there is more people who are eager to see a candidate from the um, southern part of Nigeria. If you can hear us, uh, kindly go ahead. I'm asking, what, why do you think there is more people who are eager to see a candidate from the South? Because I've seen people who say, 
regardless of the political party, even if they love the PDP or they love the APC, they are only voting for a candidate that comes from southern Nigeria. Um, and they don't mind voting, you know, uh, you know, uh, for a candidate from, the, you know, a, pa a party that they don't even support, as long as it is a, ca a candidate from the south. Um, so why do you think that is? Yes, you know, people who, you know, who felt or uh, in such manner are patriotic. You know, it's a patriotic statement. Those of us who believe that the candidate should come from the from the south believe that in this country we believe that the only way you can you know, be fair to other, you know, section of the country is by, you know, after your eight years from the north, let the south, anywhere from the south, 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 southeast, southwest, can have it, you know. But we are not trying to bust the presidency to the south. We are appealing. We are, you know, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are on table with some of our northern friends to see reason why we have to do this, why this has to come to our side. For instance, some of the some of the zones in the southwest, like southeast, are in the president for a very long time. So they've not even tested the presidency. So we are saying that let the president, let major the, the, the leading two political parties move their presidency to the south, either PDP or APC. Then let the electorate join. You can tell me that PDP will not see a good candidate from the south. Of course, they are even bringing some of their best out, like Governor. Uh, Governor Wiki, Governor, uh, my dear brother, Governor Udo, good guy, you know, and Shei Makinde also, who is trying from the Southwest. You know, you're doing the little you can do, but I can assure you, APC is taking over, you know, from him very soon. So they are bringing some of their, you know, little best out. And APC very soon will unveil from the Southwest people who will believe that they have the character, they have the widespread, they have. Their, 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 their historic, you know, achievement will speak for them from the South, from the APC. So, we, anybody that is, you know, thinking towards that direction, it's a patriotic Nigerian. Uh, Mr. Oshino, would you vote a Southern candidate of um, the PDP if the APC presents a candidate from the North? I, I think we may have... Uh once again lost him, and um, I, I would like him to answer that, you know, just really to see how emotional people are, you know, in the build-up to the elections, which is still more than a year away, um, you know, how emotional people are concerning, you know, the need for the presidency to move to the South in 2023. Um, the arguments, you know, vary, you know, in different corners. Mr. Shino, are you back? Can you hear us? Yes, I'm back. Yes, All right, so I'm this, back. I was asking, you know, and, and this is because I've heard, you know, something that I mentioned before. There's people who say that they will vote a Southern candidate regardless of the party that the person is from, um, even if it, mean, it means going outside the party that they support. So would you vote a, a PDP candidate from the South um, if the APC, for some reason, presents a Northern candidate? Uh, um, I, I will answer that question right now. You know, when you present me a candidate, I have to scrutinize the pedigree of the candidate. You know, uh, I'm going to vote for, you know, the first list that was released a couple of days ago by PDP, even though they are from the South. You know, I can decide to take on another party. Of course, I'm a lawyer party member. My party is so, you know, important to me. But I'm, uh, we'll do whatever we can right now to ensure that, you know, uh, APC produce, you know, uh, a candidate from the South. And I'm sure most of our party leaders are working towards that direction. So I, I didn't see that coming, but let's leave that for now. So when we cross the bridge. What do you think the emotional attachment to, you know, for the electorate really is? Um, um, where is it higher? Is it with ens ensuring that a Southern candidate emerges or ensuring that a competent candidate emerges? Um, still speaking with uh, Ibrahim Oshinaw, a policy risk management expert, and the conversation is really on zoning and you know what these political parties across Nigeria would be thinking about as we move closer to 2023. And now, Mr. Oshinaw, I, I want us to now talk about the Southeast and um, the complexities with regards presenting a Southeastern candidate. There's been one or two that have been mentioned, mostly former Anambra State Governor Peter Obi, um, you know, as a possible, you know, persons that might be put forward. Um, would you say 
seeing Nigeria's history, that it is only right, it's only fair, it's only just that in 2023, one of these two political parties pushes a southeastern candidate. You know, um, I, 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 can, I can say this, you know, without, you know, fear of, you know, any contradiction that the southeasterners deserve to lead this country. You know, I subscribe to the agitation, you know, of, you know, conversing for the office of the president, you know, haven't, you know, witnessed the war and the rest of it. But I'm absolutely against the, you know, the damage, you know, caused by the young folks who are destroying properties, you know, stopping children from doing work, you know, so, you know, destructing the little they have as, you know, as the South Easterners. So I've urged few concerns, you know, you know, uh, folks who are living in the Southeast and some of their political elites to kindly, you know, talk to the young folks who are damaging the lead to they have. They are complaining about, you know, you know, you know, lack of, you know, infrastructural development and the rest of them. And they are also damaging the lead to they have for their people. Look at the seat at home order. The seat at home order in the Southeast has engulfed their economy last scale of over 40% of their natural income that comes from, you know, you know, SMEs, you know, trading, even commercial banks in the Southeast are shutting down. Yeah, well, now, well, 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 Mr. Shino, that's, that's a different angle entirely, you know, and, and it's not necessarily, do you think that's an important angle with regards presenting a Southeastern candidate? Look, like I said, there is no way you can unilaterally present a candidate, a Southeastern candidate. There is no Southeastern candidate. There can be a Nigerian from the Southeast, not a Southeastern candidate. Okay, now, well, a, 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 a candidate, candidate from the Southeast. That's what I'm saying. You can't be a candidate from the Southeast without conversing, discussing, negotiating with other regions. We are six regions. Yeah. You alone from the South East cannot be a candidate. You have to talk. You have to discuss. And I give it to Owan is it What they are doing, some of their leaders in the National Assembly, who knows the game, are playing it like Senator Kwe Madu. He's playing it. He's talking to them. That, look, guys, we cannot unilaterally, even in PDP, PDP cannot give them. I bet Peter Obi should come out, which is all this, um, you know, I don't know his financial analysis that he's making or, you know, comparing the Western world, the central economy with the developing country. You know, it's unfortunately that when I listen to him, I'm always bizarre, full of bolognies in his analysis, comparing Cyprus, so comparing Malaysia, who has a stable economy, who has not suffered from leadership crisis for so many years. We have witnessed military rule that damaged our economy for many, many years. And this man will come to the national TV and you guys give him all the all the all the paparazzi to 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 spread bolognese on national TV, breaking economy. Oh well, you it's know, it's his it's his perspective, you know, and you know I think you, you are also allowed to have your own perspective. This, I'm um, on government. I would prefer a candidate like Christy Mogalu and the rest of them who can come out a professional investment banker who can come out in Southeast, lobby the north, lobby northwest, lobby southwest, lobby south south, lobby north north east, north central, and produce a candidate. I will vote for a southeastern candidate. If it's coming from a party, I will vote for them. And they have the best opportunity in APC. They have the best opportunity to produce a presidential candidate. They have the one of the best bread. You cannot undermine the South Eastern in this country. They are actually, you know, they are one of the one of one of the body body that makes up this country. You know, they deserve better. But you cannot destroy your house and still feel that the house will be intact. So I urge them to play the politics. This is the time for the politics. This is the time. This is the right time. They should negotiate. They should come out in mass. They should discuss both PDP and APC to produce their own candidate, destroying, damaging, claiming uh, elections will not hold, burning national assets. That will not help them. And it will bring them far from the power. Well, that it's is not, what I can assure you. It's not the, so, it's not the, the political leaders of the Southeast. Right yeah, it's not the political leaders of the Southeast that are you know, causing the mayhem in the Southeast. There are these elements, and I think we, we accept that they're 
elements of the IPOB or ESN, whoever they are, maybe just criminals in the southeast that are causing the mayhem, is not the political leadership. Um, if there is, you know, a I'm not saying I'm not saying it's a political leadership. Maybe you didn't hear it very well. I'm not saying the political leadership. Governor Puzo Dima, I'm quoting him now. He said there is a political undertone that the opponents are igniting the crisis. Later, you can imagine a a neurologist, a medical doctor, Prof. Uh, Dr. Lokwakuyeli, was murdered, broad daylight. In his own state, he's not a politician, he's the man a politician. He was murdered right in his own state where he was born in Anambra. Was murdered. Is he a politician? He's not a politician. So who is after the man? The man is a, is a professional. So, and if you look at those killings, these guys are not covering their face. They are showing their face and they are from one neighbor or the other. They know themselves. My dear brother, Joey Ikokwe, I was, was raised down just because it was, you know, trying to talk them over that everybody cannot be on the same, you know, cannot be on the same feather, you know. In my own state, I served at a higher level as a cabinet member in my own state. It's not what all Governor Dakwabedo is doing that I'm agreeing with. I have exceptions to some other things he's doing. I believe he's not communicating with, with, the, with the people in Nobu State. Some of his best achievements are undermining. He's not doing enough to discuss with Nobu people. That is why the likes of Sheikh Musho Umi can call him, can have the effort to call him Bantwe, your governor, because he's not communicating. The politics is not played on social media. You have to have a strategy to discuss with people. You have to form harmony. You have to work with the former media and, and other stakeholders in the party. The governors, you know, like Baba Sheikh Mushoba, he can't do it alone. He's an elder statement. Governor Benga Dane can't do it alone. Governor Amosu is there. There can be discussion on the table. He's doing his best, but his best is not known to a lot of people. And some of us who are stakeholders, who found the party in the state, are looking at back. Because if everybody's not hungry, everybody cannot be in government. So the Southeasterners need to come out, showcase what they are able to do, their capacity, let Nigerian believe in them. You know, they are more friendly to the South Easterners, but the Northerners are perceiving, perceiving them in another angle. So they need to convince some of the North Central Northeast and the Northern elites. You know, killing, burning people will take them far from the power. And like I can say that again. Yeah, well, once again, I get your point. Um, and, you know, when you're talking about lobbying and, you know, mending fences and negotiating with the North and with the South, South and, and Middle Belt and whoever else, um, those are for the political leadership, the traditional leadership, or an SND board. That's for them to do. Um, but when you put that, you know, uh, you know, side by side with saying killing and burning would not help them, you're, you're making it seem as if it's, it's, it's the same people who are committing these atrocities. There are criminal elements in the southeast that have committed all these atrocities, and you know, are probably still there. That the government needs to ensure that they address immediately. Uh, they are not the same people who should be negotiating. They're not the same people who should be speaking on behalf of uh, finding a Southeastern candidate. Same way, Kaduna State what, what, what? is going through its own security challenges, has had multiple levels of kidnappings, murder, killings, villages, and, and the likes have been attacked. But, you know, it doesn't stop the, you know, um, northern elite or political elite in the north from speaking and vying for presidency um, or for Are whatever political seat. Are you there? Yes, absolutely. What is the reason of killing? What is the reason of the mayor? What is the reason why some folks, some disgruntled elements in the South East are saying that there will not be election? Why? The reason, I can tell you, it's not far-fetched. I can tell you the reason. The reason is because they believe they've been marginalized. It's because they believe that there are, there are little or no government presence in, their, in the region. These are the reasons for their station. I'm telling you, all these people who are killing or unknown government are from one neighborhood. Somebody, they are somebody's classmates. They are somebody's yeah. customer in the market. Mr. Shudawai, I, I get that. Government. I get all of that. I'm saying that the people okay. that you are referring to now are not the ones that you expect to come and negotiate with the North for a, 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 no. a Southeastern candidate. No. Exactly. That's no. the point that I'm making. You, you, because from your statements, you've put them in the same bracket. You've said... Not instead of burning your houses, instead of causing mayhem, come and negotiate instead. But these are two different, you know, sets of people entirely. Now let me now let me break it down for you, my dear brother. Now, 
the governor of each state can call a youth forum where all these, you know, bitter-minded young folks can be on the table. What are the issues? They will state few facts, few reasons why all this mayhem is coming up in different communities in the southeast. What do they want? And I can bet you part of their agitation is that they have been tortured, they are not part of Nigeria. And their leadership, the, 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 the constituted authority, the stakeholders, and the non-state actor, like the senators, the Southeast Forum, the Governors Forum, can take their message to the center, to the forefront. I'm not saying that the young guys who are 25 years will come and negotiate. But the reason why they are doing this can be gathered within their region, within their locality. The local government chairman can summon few guys and take them to the state, to the governor, and the governor can take the holistic you know, request or the holistic concern to the region and to the center. These are the gradual reasons. Crime happens in the community, in the world. If somebody is killed today, probably in a Kedja, somebody is going to be in one world, maybe world F or world J. So somebody knows somebody who is living in world J. So from there, you have the world councillor, you have the local government chairman. So this can, is a ladder process. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying they will come and negotiate at the center. No, but they can gather information, gather reasons why all these things are holding up, are happening, then they can take it to the to the local government, to their house of rest member, to their senator, to the governor. Then we move and move and move to that extent. So that's what oh, I'm wow. saying. They can negotiate, but negotiation at the point is still the best option at this time, at this at, the, at this point in time. Oh, Some of them are saying that the government should release them the canoe. Some of them are saying that they need they need more government presence, either the southeastern president or not. You know, negotiation still needs to come up. That's what I'm, I I mean. All right. Um, I think nicely put. Uh, we would see how the political parties, the two major political parties, position themselves in the build-up to the elections. Um, they both have decisions to make at the party level. And, of course, um, I'm sure that they would also be listening very carefully to what the people are saying before they make these decisions. Um, Ibrahim Oshinawa, I always enjoy speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And uh, we wish you a very interesting week ahead. Uh, well, uh, we may have lost him once again at the end of the program. But that's all, you know, the conversation on zoning for now. We definitely would have many more as we head uh, closer to the elections in 2023. If you missed out on any of the conversations this morning on The Breakfast, remember where to find us is simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Instagram. And do subscribe also with the same handle on our YouTube channel and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Osao Gye Ogbawa. See you tomorrow.